Aloha everybody, what is going on my dudes? Welcome to another RuneScape news coverage video. For this video, we'll be talking about an archaeology journal regarding the Warforge. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Let's go. Yeah, this is the illness. What you talking about, Willis? Dune Day, Wintumber 16. Why, hey, another potential dig site has been uncovered. Those crackpot wizards in Yanil reported a strange blue glow emanating from the direction of Uglog some months ago. But it wasn't until recent that anybody bothered to march down there and take a look. But goodness, I'm glad they did. It seems as though the recent dismantling of the Mobilizing Armies arena disturbed the Earth somewhat, and somehow this disruption must have attracted the source of the mysterious glow, a dozen or more excitable little creatures that I've tentatively named Time Sprites. It seems they're just as interested in the history of Gilinor as we are. They led us to a trove of the strangest artifacts I've ever laid eyes on. Shields, helmets, and mail, all decorated with tribal goblin symbols but of such intricate design that I cannot imagine they were made by the goblins themselves. I have sent a sample off to two of our most esteemed goblin experts to see if they can provide some answers. Essien Day, Wintumper 20th. Oi, sneaky human townie, why do you even ask Bed Nose? He know nothing about proper goblin culture. He only care about fancy big high war guard stuff. Probably ugly bent nose should go live in the war forge if he likes war guards so much. You can call when you have good goblin stuff to buy. No more weird rubbish. General Warface. Oi, ugly human Tony. Why you send this to Warface? He too stupid to know about good strong weapons from the big high war guard. Probably he too stupid to even know about the forge. Wars. Pa. Next time you send this stuff straight to me, me smart goblin, not like stinky Wattface, General Bedno. Ugh, I don't know what I expected. Neither of the goblin generals could tell me anything about the artifacts I sent them. And what's worse, several of the objects came back with goblin shaped dents in. Interesting that they mentioned the Warforge though. That name has cropped up in quite a few of the Feldham Hills histories I'm reading. From what I can tell, it was some kind of military institution, closely affiliated with Bandos and his armies. But the records don't say much about what went on there. Only the young goblins were sent in and hardened warriors came out. Scary stuff. If only there was someone intelligent out there who also has excellent knowledge of goblin culture and no desire to bash someone over the head with the artifacts they find. Well, I can't think of anyone who matches that description. Maybe I'll go check on the monolith before bed. Ivan Day, Wintumber, 21st. Goodness, I woke just now to the sound of something outside the window. I thought it might be those blasted journal thieves again, but when I opened the casement to investigate further, a letter fell out. It seems I have an anonymous source of information and what juicy information it is. Dear Professor Tony, you do not know me, but I know much about you. For example, I know that your investigation has led you to the Warforge. A friend of mine, shall we say, has strongly suggested that I step in as an expert. The Warforge is of great significance to the Goblin tribes, as it was both the site of their great triumphs and their greatest tragedy. I know many stories about the Warforge, and none of them are good. Yes, it is where Banos trained his armies, but it is also where he pitted his loyal minions against each other in bloody battles to the death. The survivors were sold off as mercenaries, and Banos used his profits to build even more terrible machines of war. But at some point, everything changed. Legend has it that, just before Banos was banished at the end of the God Wars, he collapsed the great underground structure, with his army still inside. I suppose he decided that, if he could not have his toys, nobody could. The time that followed is known only as the Forge Wars. Nobody knows for sure what happens in the ruins of the War Forge, only that a few lucky goblins escaped, and then they never spoke of their experience again. I'd be delighted to join your expeditions, if you'd let me. To be completely honest, I have my own reasons to uncover the truths of what happened at the War Forge. And I think you need someone who is used to the dark. Yours, a friend. Well, what am I to think of that? A sneaky stranger.
stranger lurking in the shadows outside my window? Surely there are less sinister ways to send a letter, but it seems that this stranger, whoever they are, knows more about the War Forge than anyone else I've spoken to. Perhaps they can be of help after all. Alright guys, that is the second video of this kind. I hope you enjoyed it. You said you liked it the last time, so I figured I'd do it again for the War Forge. Let me know what you guys think about what was revealed in these letters, or these journals rather. It sounds really exciting, and I'm looking forward to archaeology early next year. Again, let me know down in the comments what you think. With that, I'm going to wrap up the video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you're not subscribed yet and you want to stay up to date on all things Risky related, then hit that subscribe button. Anyways, I appreciate you watching. I am out. Aloha.